So today I'm gonna show you how I begin our compost piles. We are gonna have three separate compost piles this year, um, started this year, but today we're just gonna focus on one. And let me chain these guys up, or at least Mallow, so he doesn't eat my little dogs. They seem to think they can fight him. Look, if you get a great Pyrenees and you get them toys, this is what will happen. Right? You guys eat them? You guys eat them? And your gloves? And your shoes? Right? So Polly, Polly will sneak inside, right inside these sliding glass doors where our shoes are, and she will steal our shoes. She has eaten my pair of Pumas that are dead over here in the grass. Having you, you guys are so cute. You guys are so cute. There's her dead, her dead lamb chops. Anyways, we have three skipper keys. They're little black dogs. They are mean little black dogs, and they think that they can fight Mallow. And of course, Mallow fights back. So we chain him up so that way he doesn't eat the black dogs. The smallest dog in particular, her name is Foxy. Don't get me wrong, Sippy is a giant asshole, but he's not stupid. He knows he can't fight the big white dog. But Foxy, she probably weighs eight pounds, maybe nine. Um, she thinks she can fight this giant dog over here. And she can't. going or at least brought out and piled up we're gonna do something a little bit different we are going to let the chickens out through their little tiny chicken hole um, that way they cannot get out to the main part of the lane and they will scratch they will scratch at that compost pile and just break it up for me because a lot of those shovels of stuff that I got out of the barn yesterday is very compacted. It's several months worth of um, bedding and pee and poop and I want the chickens to scratch around and break it up. chickens are losing their minds. I usually let them out first. Okay? You want your compost pile to stay wet. This is definitely not wet enough, but that's where we're going to put any and all extra water that we have. And then I'm going to let the chickens out. They have like a little... Listen, this is what Jake did to shut the door. And this is why Mama is out. Like, hey. Hey, Tanya. I you use the string? You don't have a knife. You're probably gonna want something to cut this with. This takes extra time and what I'm doing is so frustrating. And then I'm the bad guy because he doesn't like when I get at it all the time. The men are dumb. Hold on, baby. I know, I'm in your way. But someone thought this would be a good idea, so I have to use my non-fingernail to try to get this out of here. While I rush because the chickens want out, the goats are screaming. I don't even see how this is tied. He could have at least told me this shit. And look, look this big broken ass door. Like, I guess I'll be doing that today. I guess Jake will learn how to bake bread and make supper while I do all the man stuff. And then now we have this. Now we have this. This is how we lock the doors. Hello. Hello. Come on. So we want these chickens on the compost pile. We're going to put a few scraps on there. And a little bit of chicken food. Just so they aren't eat in there eating mama's food. Come on, Tiki. water 
cars on here. Now I have to go fill more waters. I'm gonna try to get this duck in here. One ducky! One ducky! Birds. Both boy goats in with mama. Just jumped over this handy dandy homemade fence Jake make. Look, goes clear to the ground. Super duper sturdy. For nothing. They have all this shit in their own side. No. God damn it. No. Now that all the boy goats are in there with mama and the babies, I guess I'll just go get more water and leave them all in there. Cause that's so great. <coughs> Lovely way to start your day. Which is typically how my days start. A bunch of fuckery. Molly. why people drink isn't it this is why people drink I don't drink so I guess I'm gonna go have coffee now that all the craziness is over <laughs> I went in and had a cup of coffee it looks like the top of that door is gone Okay, so another thing, we're going to do that compost pile. Um, we do wood chips in our garden. This is our new, our garden has gone this far. I guess I don't know the measurements of it. But we've started putting um, some hay and some wood chips and some compost and stuff over here. And we still have this whole area right here to do. But we did about four to six inches of wood chips over the main garden before before winter and I want to um, I can't decide because the soil here is really good I can't decide if I want to um, take some wood chips out of the garden and put on our compost pile or if I want to get fresh wood chips from the wood chip pile up front and put with our compost pile. I also, you know, like a sourdough starter, you can like take a piece of the sourdough start and, and create a new sourdough start, like help it out a little bit. Cause it's already got like the bacteria and stuff that's needed. Um, so it's like a, an inoculant. We're also gonna do that with our compost piles. You do not have to do that. If you don't have compost already, you don't have to do that. I'm just gonna do it so it gets done sooner. Just give it a little jump start. We want some carbon material in our pile. Some woody stuff, leaves, wood. Leaves take a while to break down. Wood chips seem to break down faster for whatever reason. And uh, we also want some air to be able to come in um, from from the bottom of it as well. So we're gonna pile some sticks, big sticks down. You need to do this, so continue to peck and scratch and do the things. Um, so for now, we are going to go get some twigs and sticks and some wood chips to mix in. And I'll show you how we create our pile to get it warming up and start um, breaking down. See, we got some sticks right here. I'm gonna put in there. Okay. We are gonna go get some wood chips. So, I definitely don't want to take all of the wood chips off the garden because it is helpful for a lot of reasons. Last year we had an awesome garden with the wood chips on there. But I also don't think we need that many wood chips. 
especially because a lot of them have broken down quite a bit over the winter. And there's also um, some biochar in there that I want to put into the compost pile too. Over here I have an okra plant, a couple okra plants. Um, there's no seed pods on them, but we are gonna mix this in there as well. Good carbon material for our compost bed. Stems. You guys see how good our soil is right now? Look at our soil. It's got some wood chips still in it, but if you go down even further, you don't have to dig spade or trowel. This is just from having the wood chips on our garden. I split the compost pile. It was a big mound and I didn't I didn't record it because my phone was about dead and it was like raining and it's still super windy so I'm gonna put you guys at the very edge of the barn and I don't know if it's windy or not so I'm gonna show you guys how I build our compost pile okay <clears throat> let me just explain to you what we have happening here this is the compost pile the chickens did a good job doing some scratching and stuff today um, it was only a couple of hours so it wasn't a huge huge accomplishment but it was all right so I've split this down the middle. We are gonna take these sticks. Remember we want some air coming from the bottom of our pile. So we're gonna take those sticks and put them in the center here where I've dug down to um, <clears throat> level with the bedding that's in here. And here is our wood chips and our okra plant stems. And so we're gonna lay, put a layer of the sticks and then we're gonna add some wood chips and we're gonna add the compost pile like fold it in over it and then put some more wood chips and then more compost pile and then more wood chips and then more compost pile so yeah i'll maybe just um fast record over this just because it's super windy and rainy and i mean you guys don't want to sit through all that so anyways let's do this a little bit more. Can you see the pile? I don't know where the hose is, and I don't even know if it'll reach clear back here. So our other compost pile that we've always had is much closer um, to the house, so it could reach. It could reach. See the chickens out here? They're like, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. 
Anyways, you want your compost pile to be wet so our compost thermometer would not calibrate correctly. So my hands are dirty. So we just ordered a new one and it should be here tomorrow, maybe today. And it's something that you very much need if you're gonna do things correctly because if you get your compost pile too hot, you're killing all the good stuff in your compost pile. If it's not hot enough, it's not composting. So definitely something that you need to invest in. Mama, this is Mama. Her name is actually Betty White, but we just call her Mama and she's my favorite. So, um, I don't know if you guys can see in that video, I was adding water to that compost pile as I was building it. The, the sticks and then wood chips, some water, the hay, straw, poop, then some more wood chips, some water, hay, straw, poop, more wood chips, more water. So in the, the bedding that we were using is still very, um, moist from being in the barn. So you want your your compost pile to be wet to begin with afterwards once it, once it reaches 131 degrees is when things start um, moving and and growing and breeding and and multiplying and that's what creates that warmth within your compost pile so you want your compost pile to get up to 131 degrees and it will continue to rise and rise and rise as more of those fungi and bacteria and stuff continue to multiply and eat and and move around that's what creates the heat so you don't want your compost pile to get above like 165 degrees because that heat is then killing all of that beneficial stuff that is within your compost pile. So once your pile reaches like 135 degrees, I, I like to turn mine between 135 and 145, 150, and I turn mine every couple of days, but you need to temp it every day and 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 as it continues to to compost hemp it a couple times a day anytime i go out and check the animals i will check the compost piles so i mean there's a whole lot that goes into it as far as knowing the temperatures and and when to turn it and stuff like that uh when it does reach that 131 temperature i would let it be at that for a few days so that way it gets good and going um, two or three days at 131 or higher um, just don't let it get above that like 165 mark which it probably won't because it's a new compost pile um, anyways I will keep updating you guys with the progress of our compost pile this is actually several days later that I created it and it, had, it has been rainy and, and but, but warm and so we'll go out and check it here in a little while after I get this video uploaded and um, yeah, we'll turn it so you guys can see any of the progress, see, see what we can see. And yeah, we've got a lot of really cool spring stuff happening. We have stuff coming up. We have plants that we're going to have for a plant sale, some some garden start plants, some flower um, starts, uh, a garden tours coming up. We have a lot of stuff happening here with the warm weather in Iowa. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Follow along with us while we compost and garden and, and show you how you can profit with your with your homestead and your farm um, just by by using what you have there in the experience and the knowledge that you have and learn along with us there's a lot of stuff that we don't know and um, we're still learning too but we love um, experiencing this and and learning from you guys as well if you guys have any tips in the comments as far as composting or what you guys do or gardening or just anything in general we'd love to hear about them so anyway subscribe to my channel like this video and I'll see you next time